Hi everyone, this is Vince Stiletti, and today we're going to be talking about reading the shooter's release, reading that puck off their stick blade. So before we get into that, we always hear that goalies need to be great skaters, and that's so true. But being a good skater isn't enough. If we're doing our job and we're beating passes on our feet, we're getting our feet set on the puck, that's only a part of the problem. Okay, we need to be able to, once we get our feet set, to read the release of the shooter, and then make sure that we're not looking through a straw at the puck. We know where everyone else is on the ice, so we can make saves, and if that puck gets moved, we can get over to that next pass. So today for a presentation, I'm asking everyone at home to grab some space. So look around you. If you have a space big enough for a crease, get up, stand up, make sure there's nothing that you can trip on. Today I want you to focus on, I'm the shooter, everyone at home, you're the goalie. So the three parts of our talk today, the first part, we're gonna talk about reading the shot off my stick blade. Is that puck going short side? Is that puck going far side? In addition, how do we know if that puck's low on the ice? And how do we know if that puck's up higher towards my collarbone and above my waist? The second piece we're gonna talk about, getting away from static shooting, where I'm standing still, is the puck short or far side? Is the puck low or is the puck high? The second piece, what's it look like when the shooter's moving? What are some things they can do to try to throw us off, to change the angle, get that puck on and off their stick? And then the last part, getting away from shots where there's some movement from the shooter. Last and most importantly, what can we do as goaltenders to make sure that we're not being fooled, we're staying on angle to pucks? So getting to our first point, this entire intro when I've been talking, you could see my shoulders, you can see that logo on my jacket. Now getting into our static shots, I've turned my shoulders from everyone at home. So let's imagine this entire time there's a puck down on my stick blade. And now with my shoulders closed, you'll notice something. My shoulders are facing off to the sideboards. The toe caps on my skates are off to the side. You can still see this puck, but my body is closed off to your net. So when I'm in this position, Oftentimes, as a shooter, I have defensive pressure on this hip, or someone is forcing me in this position. I'm trying to shield this imaginary puck from anyone trying to get it. So from this position, if I'm shooting on you, chances are that puck is staying on short side or blocker side for everyone at home that catches with their left hand. Now, when I start to open up my shoulders, now I turn and open, I am giving myself as a shooter more options. So now you can see my shoulders are facing forward. The toe caps on my skates are starting to point forward towards your net. And now I can work that puck still short side or I can pull that puck through my body off to that far side. So that's the first point. Is that puck staying short or is that puck going far side? Depends a lot on where my body is. Now, one thing, elite level shooters might have their shoulders closed. When they release this puck, they're opening up and they're ripping that puck far side. Or if you're cheating, they might push it back short side. So the importance of holding our feet is really crucial on these types of shots. Now, so we have an idea if that puck's going short or far, let's talk about shots that are low versus high. So I'm gonna open up my shoulders to you now. So you know I can go short, or I can probably go far side, depending on what I see. Now there's two things I want us to focus on on whether that puck's being shot low or high. I want you to look at my bottom hand on my stick, and I want us to look at my stick blade on the ice. All right, so I'll tell you where this puck's going. This puck is gonna go low on the ice, blocker side. All right, so if you're looking closely at my bottom hand and at my stick blade, what you'll notice is this. When I go to activate my shooting position, this bottom hand, my wrist doesn't roll at all. I'm pushing this hand down, activating the flex on my stick, and I'm driving through my shot, finishing with that stick blade, facing forward towards your net or your body. All right, so the difference is, this bottom hand controls the angle of my stick, which controls the flight path of the puck. So on our next few shots, I'm still shooting blocker, 
but now I'm gonna shoot blocker side high. Let's look again at my bottom hand and at my stick blade. All right, and there's the difference. On that follow through, when I push this bottom hand, this bottom hand rolls up. Now when I finish through that puck, look where my stick blade ends up. If I put an arrow on my stick blade, that thing is pointed towards the rafters. It's pointed towards the ceiling based on my follow through. So we're gonna add it all together now. We've talked about short and far side. We've talked about low and high and the importance of where my stick ends up on my follow through. There's low. When I open up and roll that bottom hand, there's a high shot. Now I've got a little challenge for everyone at home. I'm gonna shoot two imaginary pucks. I want you to play this situation out and then tell yourself where this puck is going. All right, I'm not gonna let you know. I want you to play this out. There's one. And there's two. So if for the first puck, you guessed that it was going low on the ice, glove side, you would be correct. If for the second puck, you guessed it was high, blocker side on this short side here, you would also be correct. So you'll notice in the first one, like we talked about earlier, my shoulders were closed, I opened up, that stick came through, I followed through high, this bottom hand rolled up, my stick blade was facing up. The second one, my shoulders were still closed, but I didn't open up towards the net. I followed through forward, that stick was coming high. All right, so it's really important we hold our edges on both of these. Now we'll get to that in a second, but as we move on from whether that puck is short and far side, low or high, the next point, what do elite level shooters try to do if we're on angle? So what does it look like when they're moving with that puck on their stick? So a common way, if I'm skating up the ice and getting to our second point of shooters that are in movement with the puck, if I have this puck in front of my body, good shooters, they don't shoot the puck where they present the puck. So if I present the puck in front, I'm not shooting from here, this isn't a shooting position. I'm moving, I'm letting go of that puck. So a really common way, especially off of a rush, if I'm skating up ice and I've got this puck on my stick, I'm gonna push the puck off to the side of my body and I'm gonna pop that puck off of my front foot. Now really talented shooters can shoot off front or their back leg, but it's common to get some flex on your stick that my weight transfers as a shooter from my right leg to my left, and now I can activate that flex as I shoot off of that front foot. Now there's a trade-off to every benefit. The benefit of a shooter doing this, if you're on angle to my puck now, if you don't move underneath this puck by either shuffling, shifting, or releasing from here, now you're off angle. I'm trying to shoot that puck 13 inches off the ice over your blocker, under your blocker, over your pad. The trade-off is this, and I want you to look at my body. When I shift my weight from my right to my left leg, right to left, I'm locked. I'm handcuffed as a shooter. For me to change direction, I need to drop this back leg before I can move this puck and move my body. So if you see this weight transfer from here, you know I'm locked into a shooting position. All right, really common way. Get that puck off quickly as a shooter. It's from here, my back leg transfers to my left. I step in, I'm shooting that puck. The second part, so we talked about this push and pop off to the side of my body. Now we're gonna talk about an easier way for shooters to fool us, throw us off angle, and that's a curl and drag. So with this curl and drag, elite level shooters do it. Austin Matthews gets a lot of credit for it. When that puck's starting off to the side of your body, bringing that puck into your feet, now I'm pulling that puck to my feet. I'm activating my flex, it's in my wheelhouse. I can let it go short or I can pull it all the way through and go far side. Now the benefit of a shooter doing this, they move that puck a far distance. They're literally pulling it inside of their wheelhouse. They can lean on their stick and they can let that thing go. So we have to do a really good job of making sure from here we don't drop so that when I pull this puck, we re we're reaching for that puck. We have to make sure we're staying patient. Now a tip for us in staying patient. When that puck starts out to the side, notice something. 
My bottom hand is pretty straight. And when I go and I start to activate that stick, and maybe we can get a video of my stick, the heel of my stick blade comes slightly off the ice. And that's a really good tip, a cue for us, that the shooter isn't shooting from this position. They're trying to pull that puck into their body. And once it's inside their body, now that whole stick blade's on the ice, it's exactly where they want it. Good shooters are gonna hide that. You're not gonna see this. You're not gonna see that entire heel and midpoint of my stick off the ice. It might just be a slight adjustment from here, pulling it in and then letting that puck go. So the third part, what can we do about it as goalies? All right, we talked about when that puck is still, if it's going shorter, far side, lower high, we talked about this push and that pop. And then we talked about this curl and drag that shooters like because it's comfortable, it throws us off angle, it's in their wheelhouse. So how do we make saves on this push and pop forward versus this curl and drag? So with this push and pop, if I am facing a left-handed shot and I'll be the goalie now, if I'm facing this left-handed shot and I'm on angle to it, I might be able to widen out that lead leg, still staying in a nice flex stance on angle and now I can actively make saves standing or if I need to drop, I can drop underneath this puck from here and still make a controlled save. Now, the problem with widening out our leg with curl and drags are this. Now, if I'm still facing a left-handed shot and he curls and drags that puck into his body, if I widen out my leg too far, now I am no longer in a nice flex stance. I'm way too wide. So when they shoot, I have no other option but to drop and try to reach for this puck unnecessarily. So let's think about two common ways we can get underneath this puck. Instead of us widening to the point where we're locked, we're off balance, we have to drop, we can just shift our weight underneath. So when that lefty pulls it in, I'm just shifting my weight. I'm still on my feet. If they shoot low, I can drop. Or if that puck's coming a little bit closer, when that release comes in, I curl and drag. I'm lateral releasing underneath that puck. So if they shoot back short side, I can still get something on it, but I'm not blowing past my angle. The one thing we want to make sure we're avoiding, we can't be doing this. On our curl and drag, if it goes into our body, we can end up sliding off to make this save. If that puck goes far side, we might be able to get to it. But good shooters will notice that. And now I'm opening up the far side of my net. So instead, we're here. I'm set. If it goes back short side, I'm making a clean save. If it's far side, still an easy save. My body weight momentum has stopped. So just recapping, hopefully you guys have learned something. Where's that puck going? Short or far side? How do we know if it's low or high? What are some common ways shooters try to fool us? We know. Pucks in front of them, they're not shooting where they present it. They're pushing, they're popping it off their front foot. And then lastly, a really comfortable way for shoot us to th shooters to throw us off angle. The puck starts away from their body to the side. They curl it in, they drag it, they shoot. So commend everyone for showing up today. That's half the battle. The other half, try taking what you've learned from all the coaches and apply it to your game. Rock on, get better. <laughs>